powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Hello, good Saturday evening, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Q2 Weekend News. I'm Dustin Kleeman. President Donald Trump is in the battleground state of North Carolina tonight, raising funds for the Republican Party in his reelection campaign. The president ended the week raising concerns with a cryptic remark. Here's Errol Barnett. President Trump made a 16th visit to his golf property outside the Capitol today before he heads to a fundraiser in North Carolina. On Twitter, criticizing 25 years of American diplomacy with North Korea, saying sorry, but only one thing will work. But President Trump still has not clarified his puzzling comments to the press, heading into a dinner with military leaders and their spouses Thursday night. What storm, Mr. President? You'll find out. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders denied any significance. I'm not aware of anything specific that that was in reference to. The setting and timing of the remark suggests it could be connected to the October 15th deadline for the White House to decide if Iran is in compliance with its international nuclear agreement. We must not allow Iran to attain to obtain nuclear weapons. Mr. Trump had pledged to pull the U.S. out, but is now considering staying in while decertifying Iran's compliance, a middle ground move which opens the door for additional sanctions from Congress. There's never been a consideration in my mind to leave. The riddle also brought attention to the president's frayed relationship with his secretary of state. Rex Tillerson made an unprecedented move addressing the media after it was reported he called the president a moron. I'm not going to deal with petty stuff like that. Now, this morning, President Trump flustered congressional Republicans with another cryptic message, this one about health care. The president tweeting that he called Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer to work on a health care bill with Democrats, ending that tweet with two simple words, who knows? Errol Barnett, CBS News, the White House. And more on that tweet from President Trump after he took to Twitter this afternoon in regards to the situation with North Korea. This is what it looked like in fall. President presidents and their administrations have been talking to North Korea for 25 years. Agreements made and massive amounts of money paid hasn't worked. Agreements violated before the ink was dry, making fools of U.S. negotiators. Sorry, but only one thing will work. The president did not elaborate on what he meant. Hurricane Nate is on the move after making landfall in the Gulf Coast. The storm is lashing South Mississippi with powerful wind and relentless rain. Courtney Zabowski has the very latest from Gulfport, Mississippi. Hurricane Nate's heavy rain bands pounded Coden, Alabama Saturday night. The storm made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane with 85 mile an hour winds in the mouth of the Mississippi River. This is a nighttime storm. Nighttime storms kill people. Mississippi Governor Bryant warned of an 11 to 13 foot storm surge in some areas. It's a big storm and it's moving in a hurry. The water is rising and streets are flooding in Bay St. Louis. All eyes right now are on the water here in Gulfport. Nate's potentially deadly storm surge could do the most damage. That's it. All that concerns me is a surge. You know? Yeah. Hundreds of people like Antippy Blakely weren't taking any chances. They filled up sandbags ahead of the storm's arrival. We don't want what happened with Katrina to happen. We just want to be prepared. As Nate churned in the Gulf, a water spout was spotted in Orange Beach, Alabama. With Hurricane Nate, we see strong storm surges and heavy rains, and there's a high probability of tornadoes and wind damage. Nate is the fourth major storm to hit the United States in less than two months. Courtney Zabowski for CBS News, Gulfport, Mississippi. President Trump has approved an emergency declaration for a large area of Louisiana. We'll be following that storm. In our area, some rain for the region. Our friend Rob in to break it all down and where we're headed. Yeah, we've got some rain and that sort of skirted in with a little weather pattern that's yeah. moving across the state tonight, tomorrow. So I think anytime we get a little bit of precipitation, that's a good deal. Uh, got some great pictures though on our Q2 Facebook page today. Barb Erickson was out snapping away 
and uh, got some gorgeous pictures there in Pioneer Park. Also got a nice picture here from R.T. Schmidt. These are the uh, crazies from Big Timber this afternoon. A little bit of dusting of snow up there on the mountain. And while he was driving back toward the Billings area, he stopped along Park City at the Yellowstone River and uh, took that gorgeous picture. So we've got a lot of that going on. Here are the big three headlines as we look ahead here. Uh, the rain showers and the wind in the area will die down later tonight. There's a wintry mix that's just sort of skirting west of Billings. Some snow up in the mountains, very possible. Otherwise sunny and mild as we move toward Columbus Day. So if you're wanting to look at more of those beautiful colors like some of those pictures we saw, you'll have your opportunity next week for sure. The complete Storm Tracker week forecast in just a little bit. Dustin? All right, Rob, thank you very much. The totals keep climbing in our Montana Wildfire Relief Fund efforts. MDN has teamed up with the Montana Community Foundation, which I'm sure you're aware of, to help those impacted by the devastating 2017 wildfire season. Today, we received over $1,000 to push our overall donations to over $422,000. If you would like to help, we have more information right now at ktbq.com. Community of Big Sky and Yellowstone Club have been dealing with an intruder lately. It's a black bear who weighs in about 250 pounds. It's been breaking into vehicles and homes, according to the Gallatin County Sheriff's Department. It's broken into six vehicles recently, and the Sheriff's Department at Big Sky they're used to this type of activity, but this is something they haven't seen before. First and foremost, don't store food in the car. Uh, obviously, bears can still break into cars afterwards. Um, even if there's food in the car with it locked, bears can still break the window. I would just advocate that people remove all foods, any sort of temptation from the vehicle. That way, bears have no reason to actually go into the car. This one, is, for me, has at least been the worst. I've been up here for at least three years, so it's been, this is by far the worst. FWP has been called out and the bear has been captured. However, the deputy went on to say that if you do see a bear, a bear do not approach the bear. Call 911. It is unknown at this time what the outcome of the bear will be. FWP has to answer that question. They said they will have an answer to the question on Monday. Billings Hospital is looking to bolster its spiritual care, offering healing beyond medicine, a goal of tonight's 39th annual Saints Ball fundraiser full-time chaplains that are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and they really are there for people in their darkest moments. A lot of these people are going through some really trying times, um, all ages, whether it's infants all the way up to the elderly. It's very important to have these services. They provide comfort and healing and um, are there during a really trying time. More than 1,000 took part in the City of Angels Saints Ball to help raise money for St. Vincent Healthcare's spiritual care program. The program has trained, trained chaplains who are a source of support, guidance, companionship, and hope during a patient's journey. St. Vincent staff says the program is powerful when combined with the clinical excellence of medical experts. The goal tonight is to raise more than $1 million to benefit that program. Billings Boy honored veterans with green lights in his neighborhood this past year, and this afternoon the veterans came back to thank him. Veterans of Foreign Wars gave him the Patriotic Youth Award and a bicycle in appreciation. Back in June, the nine-year-old Ryland Scheidster brought 64 green light bulbs and rode them with his bike to pass them out in his neighborhood. The green light bulb, it symbolizes hope, renewal, and well-being. Ryland says the idea is to shine a green light for veterans to show appreciation. This also has to do with the, um, the football players not standing for the flag. Flag, it's it is really disrespectful because all the people that died for our country to have it free, enough for us to do anything we want. I with him 100%. Um, there's, I just know when I was his age and. You know, you did, I mean, it's respect. Our goal, if anything, for him doing all this work is that maybe our city could realize what these green lights are for and more children can get out and support our vets and more families can get together for this. He's very patriotic. He, he's just a very proud child and we're very proud of him because of this. It was surprising that at nine he wanted to go out and do this and start a movement and and hope that people would follow and be more respectful of our country. Ryland is even getting his cousin into the act with green lights planned for another neighborhood in the near future. For many, today was the last weekend to get some locally grown produce at the Yellowstone Valley Farmers Market. After starting back in July, the Farmers Market finished today in its 32nd year. The market normally runs 13 weeks, but they ran an extra this past year. 
Each week brought out more than 50 vendors with produce and food. While there's no official attendance record, the board president says it was another good year of turnout. Next year, don't forget, the Harvest Festival, I should say next week. That's just next week. That's going to be downtown under Sky Point. Hope to see you there. Up next on the 10 o'clock news, a scary scene in London. 11 injured, but officials deeming it not terrorism. We'll have details in our world wrap next. And later in sports, fighting words from a former Grizz assistant. Could his Idaho State team back them up? You don't want to miss this one coming up. You're watching MTN News with Dustin Kleeman, Storm Tracker Weather with Rob Griggs, and Sports with Casey Conlon. This is the Q2 10 o'clock news in high definition.